Welcome everyone. Nice to see you guys here. I didn't realize how popular food was going to be. So this is my second program in the food series, and it's called The Taste of Greece, and I'm here with Dave Williams of Therapy Gardens. I'm so pleased to have him here. And um, so I want to thank the Friends of the Milton Public Library for their support of my events. And let me tell you about Therapy Gardens, which is based in Brockton. They offer many workshops on gardening and nature, food and nutrition, becoming a soup master, hobbies and culture, seasonal and food gifts, and holiday cooking, and also present therapeutic topics like aromas and scents, and how to set up an adaptive kitchen to make preparing meals easier for those who may need this. So they like really are. They get a lot of great topics. So um, the next topic is going to be um, a taste of Italy. And there's a flyer over here for that. It's on the 13th of June. And um, please join me in a warm welcome for Dave. Thank you. Thank you. Now, see how she knows I don't need the mic. I, you know, I'm loud enough. So thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Jean. Um, thanks for coming out. Um, you know, one of the things that I always think about when I'm driving and I'm sitting in traffic and I'm getting annoyed and that happens a lot, but I, then I think, you know, the people I'm getting paid, the people that are coming to see me are not even getting paid and they're coming out to do this. So I really, I do appreciate you uh, coming out and I realize I wouldn't have a business if people didn't come out. So thank you. Um, and as Jean said, so my, um, my business is Therapy Gardens and, um, this is a pandemic business. So this was, I started this just about two years ago. Um, April, April is two years of the founding of the company, or was two years of the founding of the company. And July will be my two year anniversary of my giving my first workshop. Because the, the, the company actually started, the original name was Therapeutic Gardens. And it was to do gardening in assisted living and nursing homes. And we'd sold raised garden beds and all that. And then um, there's only so many garden beds that people can buy, <laughs> so, you know. And then uh, my business partner said to me, he goes, no one knows how to spell therapeutic. Change the name to Therapy Gardens. And he was right. He was right. Uh, so, <laughs> so we've been doing um, workshops on cooking and nutrition and healthy living and gardening and all kinds of hobbies and cultural things. We have one on vintage cars, all kinds of cool stuff. Then that sort of led us, you're gonna, you'll start seeing the senior you. Um, it's still, it's us, it's this, really the same company, but what has happened is um, where we branched out from the gardening and the cooking, like, you know, let's say vintage cars, or we're doing a new one on artificial intelligence, just kind of an awareness of artificial intelligence. Well, it's really hard to a, a place that's never heard of us before to say, hi, we're Therapy Gardens, and we'd like to sell you an artificial intelligence course. It just, they don't seem to mix. So that's why for some places we use the senior you. Um, and then, you know, my timing is usually terrible. Like I always miss like, you know, the real estate market when it was, everyone was making all this money and the stock market, everyone was making all this. I always miss that stuff. I never make any of it. But I think my timing has been good on this one. I think people are ready to kind of do some things, you know, that are not, at home and not online, but they want to kind of get back to the basics and kind of make their own food and get involved in things like that, particularly when you look at the garbage that is sold to us out there, you know, the high, um, you know, uh, fat content and salt and sugar and all that stuff. And that kind of led us to uh, our new ventures. So I used to, um, I gave a, a work, a presentation on soup to a, uh, an over 55 independent living and there were about 40 people, about this many people. And I did the whole thing. And uh, at the end, they were like, this has been great. Wow, this is wonderful. But we don't cook. <laughs> and I said, well, why did you come to this? And then one lady said to me, she goes, well, you're better than TV. So <laughs> I said, OK, all right, I'll take that. That's fair. So as it turns out, so now I sell them prepared meals. So we actually have, so we've created therapy kitchens. We actually um, have plans to come to Milton at some point. Right now, I can only deliver to complexes um, because I just we just don't have the funding to be able to go door to door. It's just too expensive. 
Uh, but I have my eye on Fuller Village and some places like that. And if we get some places where we're already coming to Milton, then we can branch out a little bit and maybe take some you know, door to door stuff. So um, just letting you know about that. And then the big one lately has been the at home services. Um, occasionally I survey audiences and I ask them, I ask mostly seniors, you know, because that's who I mostly work with. Uh, you know, what are you looking for? You know, what, what, how can I help you? What would make your life easier? And I, a lot of people come back with, I can't find reasonable help to help me around the house. And, and, you know, and I think the word is reasonable. <laughs> um, you can certainly find help, but, you know, particularly when you live in places like Milton or Newton or things like that, you know, they're automatically just jacking the price up. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Um, so we've kind of jumped into the fray with that. So uh, we do a lot of, we do some odd jobs and we also kind of convert homes to senior friendly, you know, uh, grab bars and things like that. So, so that's just a little bit about, you know, what it is that we do. But today we're here to talk about the Mediterranean diet. Yes. I do. I do. So I have, you can, my contact information is on the, um, brochure you can take one of those i have a card and you can always get me at info at therapygardens.com oh, oh yeah you want yeah yeah that's how i get good ratings i, I pay people off yeah uh, yeah yeah tip money so um i don't know if anyone here reads the new york times i read i read it regularly it's one of the few media things that i pay for and it's not cheap by the way it's like 30 dollars a month or something but i do read it every day and it is to me it still is America's newspaper of record. I have a lot of respect for the Times. And I almost want to put them on payroll because their last three articles on the front page have been about the Mediterranean diet, how social isolation is as bad for you as smoking and people need to do more things like this. And then, um, what was the other one? Uh, oh, there was three. The social isolation. I was like, wow, they nailed everything. The social isolation. Oh, and... Um, people who eat uh, processed foods regularly are more depressed and anxious than other people. And these are, these are all based on study. And I was, I'm looking at it, I'm going, wow, I'm right in sync with the New York Times. That's pretty cool. So, um, so the Mediterranean diet is one of those, those things that you, you hear about. Um, and it's one of the ones that it works, absolutely works. Part of the reason that it works is it's not necessarily a diet. It's more, it's something different. We'll talk about that in a minute. But, um, you know, it's, it's based on the Mediterranean. It's based on the foods that are available in the Mediterranean. For the most part, it's, it's Greece, but there's, there's France. I mean, there's even, there's even parts of Russia that would eat the Mediterranean diet, you know, things like that. So, you know, Greece gets all the, the kind of um, publicity, but there's other countries in the mix too. Um, it encourages fruits and vegetables, and that's really its strength. But the key to doing this is to, you have to lose the, the dieting mentality. Even the word, like we slip into it. I, it's in the title of my present, the Mediterranean diet, but it's not really a diet. It's more, it's a mentality, it's a lifestyle. So the new kind of thinking around nutrition and eating and all that stuff is you wanna develop healthy eating patterns instead of denying yourself something. So a perfect example for me, one of the reasons that I started getting into this is over the pandemic, I almost gave myself diabetes. I mean, I just sat around and drank rum and ate things out of a can. I mean, that's basically what I did, you know, until I was, I finally looked at my nephew, you know, my nephew was staying, he was 24 at 23 at the time. And I'm like, I am not setting a very good example for this young man. Um, and of course he regrets it now because I make him work with me now too. So, <laughs> but, um, but, you know, it's one of those things I couldn't even go to my doctor with. I wasn't even two steps in the, ro in the door and they're poking my finger with the, you know, to get my blood sugar. And they, he said to me, he said, I'm sending you to a nutritionist. And I didn't want to go. I wasn't going to go. And my mom was alive at the time. And I came home and I said, yeah, these idiots are trying to send me to a nutritionist. And she says, are you stupid? <laughs> Boy, are you stupid? I, and my mother was a nurse, by the way. Uh, yeah. So she said, yep, of course you're going. That's ridiculous. It's free. Go. It was the best thing I did. Um, this, I had to kind of put my ego aside. And um, this, this woman really showed me a lot. And some of it I'm going to share with you in here. And a lot of it kind of comes back to the Mediterranean diet. Um, but the whole idea is the patterns. You know, 
patterns. Just try to get more fruits and vegetables into your diet. If you want a piece of chocolate cake, have a tiny piece of chocolate cake. I started to say I, I was flirting with diabetes. I had to cut out pasta. And I'm, I'm Italian. I'm from an Italian family, you know? I mean, that's like sacrilege. But I did it, and, and I didn't miss it, and I did it for a long time, and I'm going to show you some of the substitutes that I, I made. But now, if I want a little bit of pasta, I'm going to have a tiny bit of pasta, you know, once I kind of got it out of my system. So what are the benefits of this diet? And these, by the way, are proven. These are not like may do this, may do that. There's a correlation to this. There's a core. No, there isn't. Um, it, there, this is proven over and over and over again. Um, so multiple studies have shown that it promotes weight loss, prevents heart attacks, strokes, and diabetes. You could stop right there and be like, wow, what a great diet. But then you go down to the second bullet point. Additional studies have found it beneficial for brain health, including reduced risk of Alzheimer's, which, you know, I think, you know, it's probably the biggest fear that most Americans have is something, you know, losing your, your memory, your, your persona, your person, who you are. Although when you serve, when they, we survey Americans, what's the number one fear? Number one, above death, public speaking. That's <laughs> number one. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Above death. <laughs> um, yeah, it is. <laughs> um, you know, it's funny. I, I'm, was, I was sharing with Jean last time I was here. I'm having a hard time finding help, although it's been turning around lately. Um, and one of the things somebody said to me, it was my nephew, as a matter of fact. He, every once in a while, he comes up with these little wise things, you know, like smart things. And um, I was mad. I had a friend who was going to do this, and he came to one, and then he left, and he didn't want to do it anymore. And I and I got mad. And my nephew Zach said to me, "He goes, you you don't understand. Most people are terrified to stand up in front of people. So to even get someone that says, yeah, I'll think about it, is a big deal. So you know, I have I've had to think about that. You know, kind of back down a little bit." Um, but the idea of, of this helping brain health ties right into what I just told you about processed foods and people being more anxious and depressed, have, eating you know, processed foods over and over and over again. Maybe you're just not anxious and depressed because you're eating this and not processed food. Not, maybe it's not necessarily this diet that causes it. Maybe it's not following another diet. We never know, you know. <clears throat> so a quick overview of what this diet looks like regularly that's to me that's daily maybe every other day you know something like that so you want to have fruits vegetables nuts seeds beans even potatoes and you know a lot of people are surprised to see potatoes up in the eat regularly but the idea of actually having a potato is not bad it's the sour cream and, and it's the french fries and the potato chips and all those things that have no nutritional value at all whereas a baked potato does have nutritional value you know a mashed potato not so much it's you know got more butter and cream than you know nutrition usually um whole grains you know that we, we i think we know that now in this country herbs herbs and spices you know we forget that there are they're loaded with antioxidants and vitamins and nutrients um, particularly like ones like sage. Ha sage has a lot of nutrients. Um, parsley has a lot of nutrients. You know, you'd have, you'd have to eat a lot to get, you know, the full value of those nutrients, but a little bit every day helps. So then um, in moderation, and I was, it was really, I was interested to see poultry in moderation. I thought you would see poultry, you know, more regularly, but you don't. Poultry is, it does have cholesterol. You know, it's got a good amount of cholesterol in it. Um, and then you want to, and the cheese and the yogurt, the cheese is, you know, the fat. That's you, and the salt. You know, cheese is very, very salty. So you want to be careful there. And yogurt has a lot of sugar. You know, so even Greek yogurt, like people, oh, I only eat Greek yogurt. Well, Greek yogurt has a lot of sugar. You know, so you want to kind of, you know, think about that. If you're eating, if you're watching your sugar, but you're eating yogurt every day, yeah, you know, even these, like these hidden sugars, they call them. I'll give you one. I, for years, every day, I was drinking Carnation Instant Breakfast. You would think that that's a good, it's called Carnation Instant Breakfast. They changed the name now, by the way. It's called something else. But um, it's loaded with sugar, absolutely loaded. So to me, it was detrimental. I thought I was getting all these nutrients, and I'm looking at it going, no, my sugar level is spiking because of this, you know? And then rarely, you want to eat rarely red meat. And then I want you to look at these next few words, because all you need to, the, all the red flags are there, every single one. 
processed, refined, refined, highly processed. When you see those words, run the other way, right? So what's the definition of processed? Does anyone know? We all use it. Pressed meat. Pressed meat. OK, yeah, that could be one. Yeah. Processed is if you can't make it at home, it's processed. So one of the most highly processed foods you can eat, believe it or not, is canned soup. Canned soup, yeah. Yeah, that's what got me into the soup business is I started looking at the labels, which was eye-opening. Um, I mean, some of them have 50, 50 to 60 percent of your sodium for the day in one can of soup, you know. Um, and there's very little nutritional value because they cook it at such high heat. Those little tiny pieces of meat that like pressed, he's right, it's probably pressed meat is what it is. Um, those little tiny vegetables, you know, you can't do that. You can't do those things at home. You can't cook at that high heat at home. You just can't. So that's the definition of process. The best way to, to kind of remember this is the less someone or something has touched your food, the better it is for you. It's that simple. So following that logic, a head of iceberg lettuce is better than leaf romaine lettuce, is better than loose leaf lettuce, is better than bagged lettuce, right? Bagged lettuce being the worst. Why is bagged lettuce the worst? Someone's touching it, right? No one's touching that. Think of a head of iceberg lettuce. There's someone in the field going, doop, putting it over here, and then it's basically staying as a head of iceberg lettuce. No one's touching it or doing anything to it. Yeah? No, that's, that's not true. And a lot of people think that. Iceberg lettuce does have nutrition. Not as much as the darker varieties, but it does have some nutrition. It does. It has, it has vitamin K. It has a little bit of potassium in it. Um, yeah, but you're right, the darker green, the, the, the darker leafy greens are better. The darker they are, the better they are for you. However, my point, my point is more about touching things, you know. So that, that bag lettuce has probably gone through a machi two machines and has been touched by a person. So you think about that, you know, that's a lot. I was reading an article uh, from a, um, he was an attorney who did food poisoning cases. And they asked him, as a, you know, an interview, and they asked him, what are some things you would never eat? Give us some, you, you know, your number one or two things you would never eat. And the number one thing he said was oysters, raw oysters. He said, I've just seen enough of people getting sick from that with the warming waters and all that, so I would never eat that. And his second was pre-cut fruit and bagged lettuce. That was his sec second one, was those two. I'm not going to lie, I, t I still buy bagged lettuce on occasion. It's just too easy not to. It's, it is, but you're also losing nutrition because it's not only the, the, it's been you know, chopped up and then it's under the bright lights, you know? so you're losing some nutrition too. So you want to keep that in mind. The less someone has touched your food, the better it is for you. Um, you want to avoid, like I said, all the added sugars, the refined you know, processed foods and all that stuff. It's just no good. So some foods of note. So this kind of feeds into the, the healthy eating patterns where, you know, I'm going to highlight some foods that you should just try to get in your diet as, as best you can. And you don't have to do them, you know, every single day, but try. So beans, that's the first thing this nutritionist said to me. She had me write down everything that I ate and she hated all of it, <laughs> <laughs> all of it. But one thing she liked, she zeroed in on soup. I love soup. I make it all the time, I eat it all the time, I love it. And she went, she honed right in on that, and she said, that's the key for you. If you love soup, all I want you to do is make sure it's a broth-based soup, which it always was for me, and I want you to replace the pasta with beans and lentils. Do that, and, and I, I did it, and I never looked back. I can't even tell you the last time I put pasta in soup, and I never looked back. So, you know, you wanna keep that in mind. It's a great way to get some, some legumes into your diet. Um, any bean is good, any single one, they're all good for you. There's, not, there's none that are bad for you. Um, I happen to use cannellini probably the most. They're probably the most mild, and they seem to fit with the most things. You can put them in a soup. You can use them as in a red sauce if you want to. Um, but le red lentils I use for soup all the time, and the reason I use red lentils is they break down. Uh, whereas the, the green and the black and the brown lentils, the French lentils, 
will hold their shape a little more, which is also fine. If you want, if you like that, that's fine. But they're better for like salads and, and maybe like Indian food, things like that. So the red lentils seem to do better with soups and stews, which is why I use them. What a great question. Canned beans versus uh, dry beans and soaking them overnight. So taste-wise, there's no difference. You know, I mean, there's, there's, no, there's no comparison. The, the dry beans taste much, much, much better. And the only really downside is sodium in the canned beans. So if you use canned beans, just rinse them, you know, and you're going to you know, rinse off a lot of that sodium. But if you have the foresight to soak the beans overnight, you can do that, but you can also do a quick soak. Do you know how to do a quick soak for beans? So you can do a quick soak for beans, and this works well too. You just essentially boil it for an hour. That's it. Just turn it up to boiling for an hour, and then you know let it come down, and then use them as you normally would. Discard that water, you know. And that's as long as you do that, you're getting a lot of those uh, enzymes that that make people get gassy from eating beans, you know. Um, so another one made of beans is hummus. Uh, you had some here. This is, they make this fresh hummus at, um, by the way, this food is from Athena International Foods in Brockton. I don't get any money from them. In fact, I get mad every time I go in there because they never even offer me a discount. And I go in and spend 50 bucks like once a week. Uh, and it's just a little small store. It's only like the size of this room. Um, but they've had a woman that's worked there ever since I can remember. And she makes the hummus. She's great. Um, and you just make them with chickpeas or garbanzo beans. Use a little tahini. If you're not familiar with tahini, that's sesame paste. It's like peanut butter, but with sesame. Um, and then I just add a little lemon juice, a little olive oil. And what's great about hummus is then you can add, it takes other flavors very well. I mean, you, I'm sure you've seen in the grocery store. Now, you know, the, I, I think I saw chocolate hummus yeah, yeah. the other day. I'm not gonna try that, yeah. Not, oh, oh, I hear conflicting things here, yeah? Yeah, I'm not, you know, I'm not really a big chocolate person, which I say that and people just are like, what? How can you say that? But um, so anyway, so this is this is a great one. You can um, I have a friend who's Lebanese and I, I made my hummus and I was really proud of it. And I gave it to him and I was like, try it. What do you think? And he's like, oh, very good. He said, but if you really want to be authentic with it and get a creamier taste, I said, yeah, tell me. He said, you have to pinch the little skins off each garbanzo bean. And I I'm not doing that. <laughs> There's no possible way I'm doing that. So, <laughs> so fish, as Americans, we, don't, we just don't eat enough fish. We just don't. Um, you know, women need to be careful. You don't want to eat. You Probably three times a week is about where you want to be with fish. You want to watch for mercury. And the reason I say women is because women are generally slighter and smaller than men. Um, so... But the fish that are good to eat, you want to eat the fattier fish. Those are the, it's, it kind of flies in the face of everything we talk about with fat. Like you don't want the fattiest cut, cuts of meat, but you do have fish. Um, so you can't go wrong with salmon, mackerel, tuna, anchovy, sardines. And I have to tell you, my sardine kind of thing, I've never liked anchovies and I had never liked sardines. And then one day I said, you know, I'm going to try them again. I haven't had them. And I kept reading how good they are for you. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to try them again. So I got some and I put them on a cracker and I liked them. And then I went, oh my God, I'm my grandfather. Because <laughs> right? I can remember, you'd have the tin and the cracker and just dump the tin. And I'm like, oh, I turned into my grandfather. So um, now the great thing about fish is it does not matter if it's fresh, frozen, or canned. It's all good for you, no matter what. So that's the good thing, you know? It's just, it's just good for you. Olive oil, olive oil is, is really a superfood. Olives really are superfood. Um, you know, you wanna use, it's got the good fat that's in there, but it is high calorie, so you wanna be careful about that. You don't wanna use too much of it. Um, you use extra virgin olive oil for salads and dressings, and cooking, you use light olive oil, like sauteing, things like that. You can use the, the extra virgin if you want, but I find it's a little bit better with the lighter stuff. And olive oil, you know, is great to use in place of butter. That's particularly where it, where it shines the most. And then olives. So Kalamata olives. So normally I bring olives, um, but since it's all about me, I'm also watching my salt lately, and I didn't want to eat a bunch of olives, and I knew I would if they were here, so I didn't bring the olives. That's, I brought the tabbouleh instead. 
Um, but Kalamata olives can only be grown in Greece. That's it. That's it. That's their, they're native to there. They need that climate. Um, I had even thought, I was like, oh, I'd love to do a workshop on how to brine your own olives. So I went to that Greek store and I was like, hey, you guys brine your own olives. You know, how do you do it? I want to do it. She's like, you have to buy a thousand pounds of them first. I'm like, oh. okay, you keep brining them. That's fine. <laughs> uh, so, you know, olives, particularly Kalamatas, are thought to reduce the risk of heart disease and some cancers, and that's the antioxidants in them. Um, they're rich in the healthy fats, and then the only downside is the sodium. And you know what? Rinse them. There's nothing wrong with if you get some fresh Kalamata olives somewhere, and there's nothing wrong with rinsing them a little bit. You're not going to have that. You're not going to have that salty bite to it, but you're not going to have all that salt too. So, has anyone ever heard the term nut magnet? No one's ever heard that. That's me. I'm a nut magnet. If you're a nut, you're attracted to me, and you're going to chase me around and want to talk to me all the time. And that's, my mother used to say that from the time I was a kid. She would say, you are a nut magnet. You, you, you attract weirdos. And I do, and I've just, I've, now I've just accepted it. I just, that's okay. I'm fine with it. And you know what? They're more interesting than most other people. So, um, but the idea of nuts, you know, that's another thing we don't eat enough of. You know, unless you really are conscious about it and you say, you know, all right, I'm, like my, my ex-wife used to, she was very much into nutrition. She, was a veg, she is a veg, was, is a vegetarian. Um, but she would count out exactly 10 almonds every day. It, but she read somewhere that that's the right amount for her, you know, and, and it worked for her. So, you know, if, if you're that type of person and it works for you, add, add nuts into your, your routine a little bit. Um, they're great to add to oatmeal or yogurt. Don't get the yogurt that has the, um, the fruit blended in and all that stuff. That's just loaded with sugar. You're way better off doing it yourself. Berries, that's a, this is another one that we, we tend to overlook. We don't necessarily eat a lot of these. Part of it is because fresh blueberries are fine, but like raspberries and blackberries, they go bad so fast. You know, So I found myself kind of avoiding them. So I actually just buy them frozen now, and I just keep them in the freezer. And then, you know, when the opportunity arises, if I can throw them in a, a smoothie or a yogurt or something that I'm making, I just, you know, grab a handful. But they're, you know, berries, berries are something you should eat every day. You know, they're that good for you, particularly blueberries. Blueberries are probably, you know, the more research I do, they're probably the most nutritious thing you can eat as far as, um, blueberries and spinach, that spinach is up there too. Um, you know, those are, they're really, really powerful foods to eat. You know, what would a Greek presentation be? I had to put the lamb in there. <laughs> um, so lamb, I'm going to give you guys a recipe that is, is a, it's a fantastic lamb recipe. Um, it has more iron than chicken or fish, which a lot of people don't know. It's loaded with vitamins and minerals, and it's considered a good, high-quality protein. And I was at a, um, you know, occasionally, I know it's surprising, but occasionally these workshops don't always go as planned. And um, sometimes people put things in the ads that they run that I'm not quite sure where they got the idea from, but they didn't necessarily run what I was intending to do. So this happened in a town on the North Shore. I'll, it shall remain nameless. And I showed up for this presentation, and I'm doing it, and I'm getting a vibe. I'm looking around the room, and like no one's laughing, no one's, you know, like everyone's just cut, look miserable. And at first, I thought it was the town. I was like, hey, these people are real, you know, duds. But then one woman, I came to this slide, and I started talking about lamb. And one woman goes, "What about pork?" And I said, "Pork is not considered a high quality protein." Well, then she got mad, and starts fighting with me. Oh, lean, cut up pork, whatever. Well, anyway, come to there was 50 of them there, by the way, 55. They had advertised it as I was going to come in and make them lunch. Oh. And they, they, so they were all hungry, thinking that they were going to, and I'm like, that's, how could I possibly do that for 55 of you? Like, that, no. And I thought they were going to run me out of town. But, but the point is, when I tried to explain to this, and then I realized, well, these are a bunch of foodies, and I'm trying to tell them healthy stuff, and that's why she got mad at me over the pork, you know? But um, 
It's true, there, there are grades to protein, and pork is not a high quality protein, it's just not, um, whereas lamb is. Um, and the high quality protein, you know, when you get your late 40s, 50s, 60s, you need protein for muscle mass, and you need more of it. Um, you know, so you want to kind of think about ways to get that, and lamb is a, a fantastic way to get it. I would need it more than once, once a week, though, but yeah. So chicken is a high quality protein, but, but there's different grades of chicken too, you know, so you want to kind of pay attention to that. Um, you know, you don't want to buy a chicken that's been like brine or put in a, um, a sodium brine as opposed to just water. Like there's a lot of that out there. So you really have to watch for that. Um, another high quality protein, you, you know, a very lean cut of beef is considered a high quality protein, you know, um, any fish is considered a high quality protein, you know, but a ribeye is not a high quality protein, you know, because it's, but, a, but a, a, you know, a lean piece of filet, you know, that's six ounces, there's a high quality protein, you know, a, a 22 ounce porterhouse is not a high quality protein. <laughs> I was in, one of the things I love working in the senior centers is I, um, uh, you reach an age where the filter isn't always there, you know, and you say what's on your mind. And one of my favorite ones, I, I collect these sayings. I'm going to write a book someday. And one of my favorite ones I was doing, I think I was doing this one. And one woman raises her hand and she goes, if you eat so healthy, why are you fat? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I just eat too much of it. <laughs> so, so, so some <laughs> You want to hear the title of what my book's going to be? There, there was one in, uh, I'll tell you where, I was in Dedham. And I was doing a pickles workshop, and I said to them, and this was early on in my kind of career, and I said, oh, you know, what are some other things you can pickle? And oh, green beans and carrots, and one woman says, oh, eggs. And the woman in the back just, it was this gut reaction. She goes, yelled it, pickled eggs are for drunks. Oh. And, oh my God. and then I thought about it, and I was like, She's not wrong. I mean, you know, where did you used to see them? Like you would see them in bar rooms and stuff like that. But that's going to be the title of my book, Pickled Eggs are for Drunks and Other Tales from the Senior Centers, you know? Right. So, um, so breakfast. You know, this is a little involved. I'm a single guy. You know, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't make this breakfast for myself. But if you're, you know, this type of person, this is a great breakfast. Um, the second bullet, a vegetable omelet, you absolutely cannot go wrong with a vegetable omelet. Even, you can put a little cheese, you don't have to put a lot, but you can put a little cheese in there. Um, and then, again, plain Greek yogurt topped with, you know, nuts and fresh berries. Again, keep in mind, keep your eye on the sugar with the green yogurt, I mean, with the uh, Greek yogurt. So for lunch, this, this picture, by the way, this is as close as I've seen to an authentic Greek salad. Do you know what makes it the closest to being authentic? So the cheese, it's not that crumbled feta, but if it's a real authentic one would just be one big block of feta, right? This one, they've cut it into smaller pieces, but that's actually an, a, uh, an authentic Greek salad has um, a, one big hunk of feta in there and you, you break it up yourself. Um, you know, chickpea salad, uh, vegetarian pizza. Pizza can be a very good meal too. Use whole wheat crust. You know, you can buy whole wheat dough now Stop and Shop, Shaw's, they all have it, you know, in, over by the deli section. Uh, very easy, just, you know, put on some, some low um, sugar sauce, put on some, you know, skim mozzarella and then some vegetables that you like. That's a good meal, you know? Yeah. So dinner, um, I don't know that I would really food. I would probably grill, uh, you know, something else, but probably chicken or something. But, the, you know, kebabs is a great way to... Um, Thomas Jefferson had a great saying. You know, Thomas Jefferson was the one that had, um, what's the name of his place that he lived at? Monticello. Monticello. And he kept all these notes on his gardens and how he cooked stuff and things. And his advice was always, cook your vegetables with your meat. And it makes sense because that actually can make the vegetables taste better as opposed to when you go to a restaurant. Why do their vegetables taste so good? Does anyone know? They drench them in butter, right? They drench them in butter before they serve it to you. Um, but, you know, when you have vegetables that are cooked with the meat, like on a kebab, it does, it does add a little bit of flavor, you know, especially if you're someone who doesn't really like vegetables. Um, and then I just kind of want to call your attention to the bottom one, mussels. So 
um, mussels are one of the best, healthiest things you can possibly eat. They're a very, there's a clean protein for you. And because they're a bivalve and they're constantly, water is flowing through them constantly. So they're a very clean um, protein. And um, it's for, I used to go to a, after work on Fridays, we would all go out and there was a, another group that was there. At, it was a Pizzeria Uno, believe it or not. And there was an old timer there and he would, we would talk about fishing and stuff. And he would tell me when he was a kid, he would go to like Duxbury Beach and he said, people would step over the mussels. It was like a trash that like you didn't even, he said, and now you can't even find them. You know, now they're, you know, $4 a pound or something. So, um, but they're very good for you. All right, so let's put some things into practice. Let's look at some, some recipes and things that you could um, make to do these things. And the first one I think is my favorite, yeah. So this is, um, I was on Facebook one night and I have the friend who's Lebanese who told me to pinch the chickpeas, the skins off. He had posted on Facebook one night a picture of something that he had been cooking, and he just put, what's this? And all these people were posting on it, and they were all posting a version of Lou Bay. Some of it was, it was L-O-O-B-E-H. Some of it was L-O-O apostrophe B-E. Some of it was L-O-O-B-E-Y. Just all, they were just all spelling it different. So I was getting a little frustrated because I was trying to look it up because it looked really good, and I couldn't, so I messaged him. I'm like, Bernie, what is this? And he's like, oh, they're trying to, none of, they think they speak Lebanese and they don't. So they try, it, it's, you know, it's, a, it's their regional accents and all that. It's just lemon green beans. That's all it is. So he gave me the recipe. It is the most flavorful thing you've ever had. And it's made with water. You don't even use stock. So what you do is you buy, I get a, the Lega lamb, you know, the one that's in the netting, which is not cheap. You know, I mean, that's 25 bucks, 30 bucks right there. But this, this particular dish is worth it. And then cube it up. And then all you're going to do is brown it. And you're going to, as you're browning, you're going to add the spices. And you can use whatever spices you want. I use down the bottom. I use cinnamon, coriander, black pepper, nutmeg, allspice, and paprika. That's basically a, you know, a Middle Eastern type, you know, generic spice. Yes? I don't grind. I just buy the powder to mix it. Yeah. Yeah, grinding it would be great. You know, that... Grinding? No, sauteing. I said sauteing. Sauteing. Yeah, it's okay. Um, so you keep sauteing, you know, so you add the, the, uh, the spices, you add the onion, you add the tomato paste, keep going, keep going. Then you're going to cover it with, add the green beans, cover it with water, and you're going to simmer it until the green beans are done. It's not even until the lamb. The lamb is done relatively quickly. So you wait until the green beans are done, and then you add in the fresh mint at the end, just before you serve it, and a little drizzle of the lemon juice, just squeeze a little lemon juice in there. And it is it's fantastic. You wouldn't believe how good it is. So I, um, I really recommend this one. You guys have seen these, right? Yeah. Dolma, grape leaves. I prefer the vegetarian ones. I, I like the ones without lamb in them, with just rice and, um, and mint, really. But this is, um, how you do it is you you roll the grape leaf, I'm gonna show you how to do that, but you buy them, you can, you can, I grew grape leaves at my last house that I owned. I was like, oh, I wanna have my own grape leaves. I never once saw a grape, but I did get a ton of leaves. <laughs> so, uh, but I never did see a grape. It was like five years, I never saw a grape. But, <laughs> but um, and then I had, a, I had a friend who bought, he bought a house and um, out back had a grapevine. You know, you see him like that. And we were out there and he was showing it to me and he's, and he's like, he's like, oh, I'm going to make wine and I'm going to do this and do that. And there was an old timer, his neighbor next door. And he goes, yeah, you'll get about one bottle out of all those grapes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what you do with these is you roll them and I'm going to show you how to roll them in a minute, but then you pack them in the tightly in the pan so they don't break, break apart. And then you just cover them with lemon juice and olive oil and let simmer them till they cook. But the key is when you roll them, this is how you do it. And I save, um, I make grape leaves whenever my sister comes to visit because she talks in nonstop. So it gives me something to do while she's prattling away. I sit there and roll grape leaves and I get a lot done while she's there. Um, so what you do is you cut, you told, notice at the top one, that little notch, you cut the little stem out, right? And then all you do is you, you a tiny bit, that even looks like a lot, 
because the rice expands when it, when it takes on the liquid and you don't want it to burst and break the leaves. So just a little tiny bit, I would say like half a teaspoon, you know, so you put like half a teaspoon and then you fold it over and roll it up just like that. And then, like I said, you just pack them into the, you know, a little saucepan, just pack them in, cover them with half lemon juice, half olive oil, and just simmer them for 20 minutes or so. They're fantastic. So this I've been calling superfood soup. Um, this is one I actually, a couple of years ago, I was eating this in the winter for breakfast. I really I just have a little cup of it in the morning. It was great. Um, but you have, if you look at this, you, there's so much in here that's good for you. And really, there's nothing bad for you. Nothing. Um, so you look at this and you say, all right, lentils are great for you. Olive oil is great for you. Onions good. Carrots are good. Celery is good. Garlic is a superfood. Um, you know, any of those seasonings are good for you. As long as you use a low sodium chicken or vegetable stock, you're fine. Um, the diced tomatoes, just buy a can of unsalted, right? So you're not adding more salt. And then I throw a little turmeric in there. Um, turmeric, if you're not um, familiar with turmeric, a lot of people take it as a supplement. It does the same thing as about 14 prescription drugs that are currently on the market. Talk to your doctor first because it can have interactions with other things. Um, and then just salt to taste. And then that little, that's a restaurant trick down the bottom. If you don't know it, it's a great one. Just before you serve something, drizzle a little either red wine vinegar or, uh, or the juice of a lemon, and it gives a little zip, and it's much better than salt. So that little vinegar trick, you can use regular vinegar too, um, and that works with almost any soup or stew or anything like that. Now that's a restaurant trick. Oh. No, no problem. So I was doing this one, uh, I was doing a, an herb garden one, and the same thing happened, I went too fast, and a woman said, oh, you want, and I went to go back, and she went, oh, forget it, I'll just kill it anyway. So, <laughs> and I'm happy to send, send all these recipes to you, by the way. If you just want to put your email up here, I'm happy to send it to you, okay? And I, I, did, you, did I send them to you last time, too? Did I send you? Yeah, I send them to Jean, too. So if you don't, don't want to email me for whatever reason, or, or if you're not an email person, I'm sure she'd be happy to help you out. Um, so this, this one right here, I do, um, I do a soup... Uh, presentation, but then I do soup tastings sometimes when I'm trying to, you know, try new things or focus groups, things like that. This one wins every single time, every single, no matter what. I could put any other soup that I make up against this one, and this one wins every time, hands down. And I, I'll tell you why. It's this right here. You simmer, you take a Parmesan Reggiano or cheese rind, and you cut the rind, you cut the cheese off, you keep the rind, and you throw the rind in the soup and you let it simmer along with the vegetables, and then you take, you just kind of fish it out at the end, and it leaves a, a, gives a really nice, some salt. Um, and then if you forget to fish it out, and somebody you serve it, you just say, oh, you won. Yeah. How do you combine these ingredients? I mean, do you just dump from the top to the bottom of the pan? Yeah, that's the beauty of soup. You just throw it, every, it all goes in the same pot. I may do a little sauteing in the beginning, like, you know, I might saute the carrots, the onions, and the olive oil. You don't have to. You really, the only reason that you do that is they just cook faster. People will say, oh, it brings the flavors together. You're going to bring them together anyway because you're going to cook them for a couple of hours together, you know? But, um, yeah, I just basically throw everything together. And you'll notice I always put four to six cups when I put broth. I always do that. And the re or I try to always do that. The reason I do that is some people like a thinner soup with more broth and some people like a thicker soup. So for me, I'm more on the, the six cup. I like a thinner, more of a brothy type soup. But if you, so what, what I usually do is I put the four in and then I just have the two off in reserve. Sometimes you need them the next day. You know, like you, you take it out of the refrigerator and the lentils have sucked up a lot of the liquid. Just add a little bit more of that stock in there. It's not. She just said it's not that easy to find the cheese rind, and she's right. Yes. Whole Foods sells cheese rinds. Yeah. Whole, yep. Whole Foods sells it. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Crowdsourcing. That's what I like. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. You can. F I've had. I've actually had good luck at Market Basket. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And, but I'm also. You know. I'm one. Of, I'm one of those like old guys that shops at seven in the morning. So they usually have everything when I'm there, like they're not, you know, or they have nothing, one or the other. 
So this is a, this is called Fakis. This is a, a Greek lentil soup. Um, and again, you know, you look at it and you're really just covering it with water. You're not really covering it with stock or anything like that. And the flavors are just fantastic. So, um, and this one you would use the, the dry, the, um, probably the, I would use like the, not the red, the, uh, the dark ones, you know, not black, maroon, maroon, I guess. Yeah, brown, yeah, brown lentils. So this is really easy to make. You can, all you do for this, you can infuse your own oil. And I do this and I use it for salad dressing, believe it or not, and it comes out great. So all you do is just take a, a couple of cloves of garlic and just smash them with your knife, leave the skins on, it doesn't matter, and then just cover them with light olive oil, and then turn the heat up, you know, add salt, a little red pepper if you want, you don't have to add, add the red pepper, and then just get that oil kind of going, and it's, it's not going to boil, but it's going to kind of simmer really strong. And let it, let it go for, you know, a good five minutes. Turn it down, let it sit there. And then take a vegetable peeler and just peel the yellow of the lemon, the zest. Throw that in there and let it steep for a few minutes and then strain it. And it's, it's fantastic. This is another one I bring. I do a workshop on how to infuse oils and teas and things like that. And I usually bring samples, and this one wins every time. Um, you know, is dip it in bread or something. Yeah. I just do, so you know what I do? I have, I keep these things at home and I just fill this first and then I dump this in the pot and then I know I've got it. That's what I do. And I just do enough to cover whatever it is I'm doing, you know? All right, so all this is well and good, but you know, what happens when you go out? <laughs> this is when people kind of, tend to blow their diets, or we're not supposed to say diet, blow their eating patterns, right? So one of the things I do this when I eat out, I don't eat out as much as I used to anymore, um, but I try to get fish or shellfish as my, my main meal, mainly because I hate cooking it. Um, I'm just, I'm not great at cooking fish. I almost always overcook it, you know, um, and it smells up the house, so. You know, ask for whole grain bread instead of white bread. Ask for olive oil instead of butter. Those are good little tips. This is a great one. Add extra vegetables to your order because we don't eat enough vegetables. And there's no like, you know, back when people were doing the points and things like that, there's no points to vegetables. It's, you know, it's, they're free. Um, you know, avoid creamy salad dressings. And really, there is no amount of alcohol that's good for you, like none. They'll say, excuse me, things like, oh, you know, wine's good. Little wine is good for you. That's not true. That is not true. It does not help you sleep. It does not. It might help you fall asleep, but your sleep is not good. You have, it's, it's bad. It's very bad for you. Um, I'm actually kind of almost becoming anti-alcohol, and, and I really only gave it up for health reasons. You know, like just, why am I, what is this bringing to my life? Nothing, really. Um, you know, now, I've had, I had one woman, she's 92, and she, I said that. I said, there's no amount of alcohol that's good for you. She goes, red wine is very good for me. <laughs> I, I said, well, I said, you're about 40 years older than me, so okay, I'll go with it. So, <laughs> so you know, one other thing, and we're kind of, we're getting towards the end here. I you know you're getting a little restless probably. Uh, grow your own. You know, this is something that there's no easier way to get the full nutritional profile of food than to grow it yourself. Because when you think about this, a tomato, just the average tomato that you see in the grocery store has sat for six weeks before it's even been put out. Think about that. And you could sit for six weeks on your counter now. That's right. Now you could buy a tomato, it's like having twenty. Right. And it <laughs> and it tastes terrible. It has no flavor. Yeah, I won't even buy a store-bought tomato. I just won't. I, I, I won't do it. A cherry tomato. I'll buy a cherry tomato. Those seem to still have some flavor. But uh, there's nothing like growing your own tomatoes. That's just... You know. They suck. They're just terrible. They're terrible. They really are. I, I, yeah, I just... I'm, I go to a farmer's market or grow your own, you know? Um... You know, and they breed out a lot of things. Like these tomatoes are bred to, to like, like she said, they don't, they don't rot. They don't go bad. 
that's not necessarily a good thing, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so um, grow your own. Blueberries and raspberries are really easy, particularly blueberries. If you just get what, what they call wild blueberries or New England blueberries, they're native to here. They'll grow everywhere. A lot of people use them as ground cover. You're probably going to give up the berries to the rabbits, but, yeah. you know. Um, garlic is great to grow. I actually, every year, when I, this year I'm not doing a vegetable garden, I'm doing a flower garden instead. Um, but when I had a vegetable garden, I would ring my whole garden with garlic. Oh. Yeah, and I've noticed that there are, you know, some, it doesn't take care of everything, but some animals don't like it, and they'll just kind of wander off, you know. Um, green beans are easy to grow. And consider an indoor garden. Have you guys seen these? Yeah. I love these. You can get them at um, Kohl's, uh, Amazon. I think Bed Bath & Beyond, you probably get them on sale at Bed Bath & Beyond now, going out of business. But if you're not familiar with these, it's, this is a hydroponic system. Way up the top are the lights. And so when it starts out, the lights are really close to the seedlings. And then as they grow, you go like that. It blinks when it needs water. It blinks when it needs nutrients. And it's on a timer, a 12-hour on and off timer. You really have to do anything. So I actually have one of these right on my kitchen counter. People, people, it's a great conversation piece, too. I use it all the time. And you can probably get them. They're, they've come down quite a bit in price. They're probably like 70 bucks now, you know, which I think is worth it. You know? So this is a great one. This is something I actually started doing this. Right? Have you seen this before? I don't know if anyone's seen this one. But I actually started doing this one, not to lose weight, but I did it. It's supposed to reset your gut flora. So you probably have read some things about like gut health and microbes and things like that. So the, the thinking goes that we get into eating ruts and we basically eat the same things all the time. I know I was doing that for a long time. You know, one night I have spaghetti, one night I'll have meatball, you know, one night I'll have a salad, one night I'll have fish, you know, this, but it's always the same stuff. So then I came across this, and all you need to do is, in, in one week, eat 30 different plant-based foods. And it can be nuts, it can be herbs, it can be you know, leafy greens, it can be fruits, anything that is grown out of a plant. And what I did is I just kept the list in my phone alphabetically. And by the time, I mean, by the time you get into the 20s, you're going like, you're in the grocery store going, well, I haven't had that, you know? <laughs> But it really, it's a great way to do it. Um, and it's, I haven't even done it with my friends. I've just done it like against myself and I've, I really have enjoyed it. And I do, I have to admit, I feel better when I do it. Um, but it does take a little bit of a commitment. You have to, it's gotta be kinda at the front of your mind, which is, I guess is the purpose. It puts eating vegetables and fruits in the front of your mind, which is a good thing. Can Say that again? You can eat any other stuff too, sure. You're just keeping track of anything plant-based and you're just trying to get to that 30 if you can. And you, you would be surprised. You know, you're, you're looking around like yams. You know, when was the last time I had a yam? But I remember buying one when I was doing this because I was like, okay, I haven't had a yam today, so I'm, uh, this week I'm going to do it. So some final thoughts. Uh, I don't know if anyone's familiar with Michael Pollan. He's a great writer. He was uh, basically a food and nature writer, and he was the first one to kind of start talking about the bees and the collapse of the bees and things like that. And he has, um, and it's right at the beginning of the book, I think he even opens the book with it, this quote. And I would change it just a little bit for, um, for our times. So eat food, mostly plants, not too much. I would just add one word, and I would add eat real food, mostly plants, not too much, because there's a difference between food and, you know, real food and, and quote, food, you know, so real food. And that kind of goes back to that, the whole, the whole thing, the, the more whole something is, the better it is for you, the less risky it is for you, you know? Real food is redundant. No, but, well, not really, because, well, but it isn't, it is, okay, at our age, it is. If you ask my nephew, who's 24 years old, if I said to him, is Kraft macaroni and cheese food or, or not, he would say it's food. And it's not food. It's not. It, yeah. So, so there, you know, it's funny. I used to, I used to work in a, in a high school. And one of the things that I was always thinking about is 
a lot of the conflict between adults and young people comes from the changing nature of words. And I'll give you a really good one that a lot of people don't think about. But in a, in a high school setting, this was a big one, respect. So you would have people our age that would say, respect to us is you be polite, be nice, treat me how you would want to be treated, maybe be deferential if I'm a little older or I have, you know, I'm the teacher and you're not, you know, something like that. That's respect. Young people, respect is how you treat me is I'm going to treat you that way. So if you treat me, if you disrespect me, I'm disrespecting you. Like, that, you think I'm kidding. I'm not. I'm, if you have, like, grand, grandkids, ask them. Say, what does respect mean? And you'll see, respect is, it's, for them, it's a two-way street. It's not a, oh, I give respect. No, no, it's I expect respect in return. You know, it is. It's, and there's a lot of words like that, real food and food being one of them, I, I think. So thank you for attending. I'm happy to take questions or insults or anything else. Yeah, Jean? No, they're whole anchovies. They're no, they're actually whole. Do you know, like anchovies? Yeah, yeah. They're just they're basically what they do is they they just press them, and the juice that comes out they add a little oil to it. You know, but that's it. They're not. They're really not processed. No, they're whole. If you think about it, if you've seen a sardine, they're whole. They are good for you. They are. I I did, and then I you know thought I was become my grandfather, so I stopped. So. Yeah. What else? Other questions, comments? Yes. What spices do you use? What spices do I use? Most of the time. Most of the time. Time. I use time, T H Y M E. I use that constantly, um, mainly because I think it's, it's mild and works with a lot of things. Um, I use a lot of uh, basil, I use oregano. And for the, if I'm, you know, kind of going off into, you know, other directions, um, cinnamon, allspice, nutmeg. Yeah, you can't go wrong with, the, like, that whole combination. Yeah. Cardamom, you know, which is very expensive, you know. Basil? Oh, basil goes well, great with tomatoes. Um, yeah, salads, put them right in salads. Yeah, yeah. Yes? So... I would love to. Um, you know, I, it just hasn't been on my radar, but if, if they found me, I would do it. You know, we had talked early, early, early on about maybe working with schools, um, but two, two things are at play there. Um, one, that was my previous career, and I kind of don't want to do it. <laughs> and, and two, um, I don't want to deal with the structure and the rigidness of it. I want to be able to say whatever I want to say and do whatever, I, you know, I don't, and I just don't, I don't want to deal with having to kind of watch myself. On, you know, I did that for 20 years. I don't want to do that anymore. But yes, but I would, if their parents were there, and, you know, although I did at one library, we did um, make your own seasonings, and there was like a father-daughter that came and made seasonings together, and it was really cool. So, uh, but yeah, we do all kinds of other groups, too. Like I was telling her, I, you know, the Red Hats, I've done some stuff for them. <laughs> Uh, we garden clubs. I do a lot with gardens club, women's groups, um, nonprofits. You know, so if you live in a complex, we do a lot with complexes. Um, I tend to I avoid the assisted livings, and I more I try to go more independent living than assisted living because sometimes you get into like you know uh, food dietary restrictions and things like that. So all right, anything else? Yeah. So, yeah, so, you know, I don't know, and I don't want to speculate, um, because nut allergies make me very nervous. They do, um, you know, and it, as a matter of fact, I, I avoid them as much as I can, and in fact, I turned down, we had a, I have kitchens that make, you know, my prepared foods for me, it has to be an inspected kitchen and all that, and one of the guys that was going to do it said to me, you know, my son has a peanut allergy, so I want you to be careful of it. And I, I said, you know, I, I don't want to do it. I, I just, I don't want to deal with it. So I don't want to give you wrong advice. I, I really, that's out of my realm. Like cashew yeah. Like yeah, I don't, uh, mm, yeah. Anne might know. <laughs> well, 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Good answer. Another crowdsourced answer. Yeah. Yeah, I just, you know, I tend to avoid things like that. I just don't want to uh, wade into things where I don't know what I'm talking about, you know. So, all right. Anything else? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Well, for, I would recommend what you like. So decide what it is that you like, and then go from there. They almost all are very easy to grow. Um, they don't need fertilizer. They don't need even good soil. You know, most like thyme would grow in sand. Um, it really, you know, it really would. Um, so I would grow. You know, it also depends on you're going to grow them inside and grow them outside. Some of them have, like thyme, can be also used as ground cover. So you, you have like an edible garden, you know, it's like, it's not only ornamental because thyme has flowers and the flowers don't change the taste of it. So you can, whereas basil, the flowers change the taste, you know, but I would, I would just stick with the, the generals, you know, basil, oregano, right? You can't kill oregano, you know? So if you're, if you're nervous about stuff like that, thyme is another one really hard to kill. Mint, 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 don't put it in your garden, put it in pots or you'll have all mint. Sage will come back every year. Sage is a great one, you know. So that's, you know, that's what I would do. You know, and then every year I always do a, a little something different, like that I haven't done. Like I did chocolate mint one year. It wasn't very good. But, but I tried different, you know, just to try stuff. All right, anything else? Yeah. Yep, yep. So, you know, oats. Yep. Yeah, so, you know, milk is, milk is high fat. You know, that's, that's really, that's the, and it's got sugar. It has, you know, there's, there's a fair amount of sugar in it, too. So, for example, for milk, I actually, I use the Fair Life. I don't know if you, you guys use that. I love it. You know, it's, it's, it's lactose-free. I get the, the fat-free one, and you almost wouldn't notice the difference. It does last forever, too, yeah. And that was, Fair Life, very interestingly, was a, um, a small farm, a couple, and they figured out how to separate lactose from milk. And you know who swooped in and bought them? Coca-Cola. Yeah, they went, whoa, hey, wait, a this is a big deal. And they did. They overpaid for it just to, to have it. But they've done a good job with it, at least from what I can see. Um, your question about grains, you know, I, you know, I do granola. I get, I use um, Bob's Mill. Is anyone? I get all that stuff. So I love it. I love it. So I just, actually, I ate, that's what I had for breakfast was I, I ate in traffic today. I just had a little dry granola just as I was driving. Um, but I, I would do that, you know, steel cut oats, you know, those are all good things to do. Um, anything that's not refined and processed, you're fine. How do you, how do you find a brand? Go with Bob's, Bob's Organic. It's, it's Bob's Red Mill, is that it? Yeah, yes. it's called Bob's Red Mill, and I've seen it everywhere. Shaw's has it. They do, they have cereal, they have granola, they have oatmeal, they have individual little oatmeals you can get. They have them with flaxseed in it. I mean, it's, it's a great brand. So Bob's Red Mill. They also make lentils, beans, all dry goods, you know. So that, I recommend them. You say you should shop on the outside of the Oh, that, I love that advice. That, yeah, yeah, I've, advice. yeah that shop on the outside of the grocery store. You know, you think about it, all in the middle, that's where all the sugar is, right? <laughs> all right. What else? Anything on your gene? Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, the, the state does something very interesting um, for people that are on um, SNAP, food assistance. If you buy at a farmer's market, you get, you get it back. They, they put it right back on your card. Yeah. And it's a, way of, it's a way of encouraging folks to go. Because you could use a SNAP card and you could go buy Oreos if you wanted. You know, so they so they're encouraging them to, you know, I think it's great. So you just go to a farmer's market and what they do is the they print out a little voucher thing and then you take the voucher and you have to take a picture of it and send it in. And then they put that right. They credit your account back. Yeah. Is the OK. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right, well, listen, we're talking about a lot of this food. I gotta eat something now. So, you guys have a great night. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.